Hey, River Church, how you guys doing today? Uh, for those of you don't, who don't know me, my name is Billy, uh, and I'm going to be leading us through today's devotional. Um, today's devotional, we're going to be in Genesis chapter 4. So if you have a Bible, you can open it up, your phone, whatever, you can just listen. Uh, if you'd like, I'm going to read it here. So Genesis chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 7. It says, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain saying, I've gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother, Abel. Now, Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain, a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering. But for Cain and his offering, he, he had no regard. So Cain was very angry, and his face fell. The Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why has your face fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule over it. So today I want, to, I want to unpack this passage. I want to look a little bit deeper into this passage. I want to kind of talk about what's going on. So, so what happens uh, from what we just read, right? <clears throat> so at first glance, it seems that Abel brought an offering. Cain brings an offering. Uh, the Lord is happy with Abel, but he is upset with Cain, right? He's not, he does not accept Cain's offering right it seems kind of harsh it's like man like they both brought something like why did why did god prefer abel's offering and why didn't god prefer cain's offering right um, and so yeah i was talking to some friends about this passage earlier this week and and they had a lot of the same questions that i myself had it's like man that seems so like harsh and unfair like what's happening what's happening here right um but i think i think if we take a closer look um i, I think we can see what's really going on here and sp specifically if we focus in on what it is that they brought okay so let's look at it again it says it reads now abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain a worker of the ground and so Abel kept sheep, he kept the livestock, and Cain worked on the, the, the grounds, worked on the field, right? And that's kind of interesting, the side topic. It's kind of interesting because God charged Adam and Eve. Uh, he said, hey, basically take care of all the livestock, take care of all the land, take care of everything. Uh, <clears throat> and it's, it's kind of cool to see how from Adam, Adam and Eve's children that one took the livestock and the other one took the sheep. Or I'm sorry, took the took the um, the, the crops and the plants and, and, and things of that nature. Uh, but it says, now Abel was a keeper of sheep and Cain was a worker of the ground. In the course of time, Cain brought to the Lord an offering of the fruit of the ground. And Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and his offering, but Cain, not for Cain and his offering, he had no regard. And so when we look a little bit closer, what, what types of, of off, offering were they giving to God? So we, we look at Cain, right? And Cain brings fruit, okay? And we look at Abel, and Abel brings these animals, okay? And then so one person may think, well, God maybe just preferred animals over uh, the fruit. And, and, and I could see how we would think that, but that's missing the point. There's something specific that's going on here, right? What, what, how, how important were these offerings to Cain and to Abel? So let's look a little bit closer, okay? I mean, we've got to really uh, 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 focus in on this. It says, um, um, it reads, I'm sorry, it reads, Cain, uh, he brought an offering of the fruit of the ground, 
And Abel also brought the firstborn of his flock and their fat portions. Okay, so if you look at the types of offering, man, Cain's just almost paying lip service to God. He's like, hey, I have all this stuff, you know, here's some fruit. You know, God, you can have some fruit. All right, Abel's saying, Lord, here's my best. Here's the firstborn of my of of my of my uh, and my animals. Here is the, 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 the most beautiful uh, sacrifice that I could give, the most important of my belongings, uh, the most valuable things that I have, Lord, I am giving them to you. Right? You don't see that from Cain. It doesn't describe Cain's offering that way. So we look at these two passages and we look at the difference between the types of offerings that they're giving. Abel's offering is it's just it it means a lot more to Abel than than Cain's offering. I mean, it, Cain, if whether Cain gave the fruit or not, it doesn't seem like it would affect him. But Abel, man, to give that was 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 hard. <clears throat> now, uh, I don't want to stop there. Um, I think if we were to stop there, I think we would be tempted to think that all I have to do to earn God's favor and all I have to do to earn God's blessing is to just give him my best stuff or, or just to, to, to give him a certain amount of money or a certain amount of my time or a certain amount of sacrifices that I could just, if I could just give enough to God, then God will be pleased with me. All right. And that's, that's, that's not what's happening here either. But we need to go further. And what's really happening here at the heart of Genesis chapter 4 is God is pleased with Abel because he had the faith to give his best to God. He had the faith to give his best to to God. So it wasn't just giving his best, but he had the faith knowing that, man, I'm going to give my best, but the Lord's, the Lord's good, right? The Lord is who he says he is. The Lord is going to provide. He had that faith, right? In Hebrews chapter 11, it's known as the Bible's faith, uh, faith hall of fame, right? It's all these uh, patriarchs of the faith and uh, uh, of Christianity and, and just how awesome their faith was. And it, and it says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, through which he was commended as righteous. That's in Hebrews chapter 11. <clears throat> so I want to encourage us. I want to encourage us to have faith like that. I want to encourage us to give all that we can. Give our best to God. Right huh. Now, we can't stop there. <laughs> um, Cause you might be sitting there thinking just like I, like I would be thinking, okay, well, how the heck am I just supposed to, to give more? Right. How, how can I do that? How can I have this faith just to get like, where does that come from? And I think to answer that question, we need to look at Mark chapter nine. So in Mark chapter nine, uh, <coughs> excuse me, in a nutshell, right? Uh, this family, their, their son is having seizures. He is, um, yeah, he's just having seizures. Uh, the, 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 this, this unclean spirit in him is throwing him into fire. It's throwing him into water. It's trying to kill this boy. And the parents, they've like tried everything. And they go to the disciples and they're like, can you please heal my son? And the disciples try, but they can't. And they go to Jesus and and and, Mar and the, 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 this parent brings his uh, son to Jesus. He's like, "Can you please, if you he says, if you can, let me, I want to get the the wording right." It says, I'll, "I'll just read it." It's in Mark chapter nine. It says, "And they brought the boy to him, and when the spirit saw him, immediately convulsed the boy, and he fell on the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. And Jesus asked his father, "How long has this been happening to him?" And the father said, "From childhood, and it's been." is often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if, and, and then the father says this, he says, but if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus, check out Jesus' reply. He says, and Jesus said to him, if I can, if I, if I can do anything, if 
by Cain. He says, all things are possible for the one, for, for one who believes. And, and here is, here is how we can have that faith, guys. Here's, it's, it's in the father's response. He says, he says, I believe, right? It says, uh, immediately the father cried, uh, the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. Man, it's beautiful. I believe, help my unbelief. So I have faith, help my lack of faith. I have faith, help my faithlessness. I don't have all the answers. I can't figure this out. But, but Jesus, you do help me to figure this out. Turn to Jesus. I, turn to Jesus and cry out to him. Help my unbelief. Help my faithlessness. Jesus may be calling us, maybe calling me, maybe calling you to way, in a way to walk with him that is terrifying, that is scary. But you know, scripture is clear. Uh, this is this is something that that needs to be done. It's a matter of walking in obedience. Uh, I would encourage you today. I would encourage myself. Uh, anybody listening, um, turn to Jesus. Look at Jesus. Lord, help my unbelief. Help my faithlessness. Give me the faith to be able to do this, Lord. Right, uh, James chapter two, I think James uh, in the book of James, he says, you know, works uh, faith without works is dead. And so, man, Lord, give us, give us the faith to do what you're calling us to do. Uh, that's all. That's all I have for you guys today. Um, I love you guys. I miss you guys. I'll be praying for you. I'll be praying that the the Lord fills us with His faith in a way that. Man, we can't even understand. Um, let me pray for us, and we'll, we'll call it a day. Jesus, we thank you for this time, Lord. Uh, Holy Spirit, I pray that you work in our in our lives, in our hearts right now. I pray that people are awakened by your word and your scripture and your truth. Lord, and I just pray that people find themselves encouraged. People find themselves uh, in a place uh, uh, that they find themselves in a good place. Uh, Jesus, we love you, and we pray these things in your sweet name. Amen. All right, River Church, I love you guys. Uh, it's been great being with you all, and I, uh, I look forward uh, to seeing you guys soon.